They're a very, very clever design. And likewise, the CO1211 is also uh, very much of a muchness. It's, you can absolutely see the resemblances. In fact, I do have one of those movements. So I'm just going to pause this video and see if I can dig that out and show you. Okay, so here we are. Uh, here's the Lemania 5100. Omega 1045 and here's the ETA CO1211. This particular one came to me and unfortunately has a broken chronograph runner and trying to find the parts for these it's nigh on impossible sadly because it is otherwise a really good running little movement but I'm going to flip this one back over a moment so that you can compare the two. Now, bearing in mind, of course, this one has the metal plate, which looks a little bit like a face, I've just noticed with the mouth down there. This one has the metal plate, which covers the calendar ring. This one, of course, has been removed. And the obvious differences, as mentioned, is that the top wheel on the Lemania is a 24 hour counter, whereas the top wheel on this one is your minute recorder and the central minute recorder isn't on this one at all. To give you an idea of the rapid date change on this, if you pull the stem out one step, rotate it counterclockwise, you'll note it moves away and rotates in the wrong direction. Rotate it clockwise and it moves towards the calendar wheel and flips it around. You can see the jumper spring down here and the little spring which feeds in through this mouth-like slot. And of course you can see as I rotate that, that does a rapid date change. And then you pull out to the second position and rotate counterclockwise to turn the hands clockwise to set. And then of course your start, stop and reset is as per a traditional chronograph. So I'm going to show you the thickness of that because this is representative of the thickness of the Omega, which for the time that these were being used was very, very thin for an automatic full featured chronograph movement like this. This, as I say, was, was a case of a, an entire movement replacement for, for the want of getting a replacement chronograph runner, which is a crying, crying shame. It really is. And if we go to the back of the movement, I'm going to need to do a little bit of disassembly. You can see this is marked Tissot because uh, these are, I believe, unique to uh, the Tissot movements. Because uh, what happened was uh, Tissot asked Etta for a, a, a cheap, reliable, easily bulk manufactured movement. And Etta obviously looked through their archives and said, hey, you know, the Lemania was pretty good. Uh, that fits the bill, so why don't we go with that? So the oscillating weight is held on by a spring clip, as you saw there, and it lifts off. If I can get this to cooperate, it just simply slides up and off. So you'll have to excuse my use of bare fingers here, but this is, as I say, this is uh, my own watch movement. So this lifts off like so. This is your your uh, drive gear and it's designed so that it will slip because obviously it comes away freely. Put that to one side. This is the wheel and the bridge that I was telling you about that was caked in oil on this one. And you can see if I can bear again these side by side, you can see how these are almost identical. You've got some slight differences in the cutaways on the plates, a very slightly larger plate area, possibly. Is that larger or is that about the same? It's quite hard to tell with the cutaways, but so it's not quite as nicely finished. You've not got the beveled edges and you've not got uh, the cutaways on the Omega plate or the Lemania plate. And otherwise, Everything else is pretty much the same. You've got these two plastic Delrin or whatever they happen to be 
sections with the clip spring down here. This is part of the automatic winding mechanism and as mentioned it's a unidirectional mechanism. The way that that works again is a simple but very clever system where the oscillating weight on one side of it has a spring. Now on this particular model on the TESO on the CO1211 it it's simply held in by a clip just here. It slides in and snaps into place. And if I can hopefully try and just gently tweak that up so you can see it. There we go. It's a little tricky because I'm trying to not get my head in the way, but you can see that spring there. What happens with this is as it rotates, it will lift and slip as it rotates that way. And then as it rotates that way, it drives this wheel, it turns it. And by turning this wheel, it winds the movement. This is effectively a, a reduction wheel. And this winds the movement, but in one direction only, hence unidirectional. And beyond that, the whole setup is essentially exactly the same. If I zoom in and show you the innards, now, if we look in here, first of all, for your interest and amusement, you can see there the plastic escape wheel, which is such a novelty. And I can hopefully show you as well, while I'm at that, hopefully show you, or you can hopefully see the plastic pallets. You can, yeah. Uh, a completely plastic pallet fork, the, the entire thing, it's just moulded as one piece, and it works. It works incredibly well. It's, it's one of those things that you just, it's a bit mind boggling. You don't expect it to, but it really does work incredibly well. Plastic pallet fork, plastic escape wheel. And if we go back to this view here, it would help if I took the balance out, but it is a little bit of a fiddle without taking the automatic winding section off. So just try and focus down there for you so that you can see. But you can see, other than this being a black plastic gear, the principle is exactly the same. You've got this sandwich, uh, this um, sprung system, and the principle is exactly the same as on the Lemania. Slightly rougher finish on the edges of the bridges because it is, after all, uh, a cheaper, more mass-produced movement. So you've seen, you've got like the nice beveling and polishing on the Omega, whereas on this one, you don't, it's just simple, stamped and machined in uh, as basically as it needs to be. You'll find these in a lot of your lower end TESO uh, chronographs and they can be had for great prices, especially pre-owned and they're surprisingly good. They are surprisingly good, but yeah, there's, there's that uh, plastic pallets and escape wheel again. Anyway, enough of that, let me pop this back together so that I can put this away in the hopes that one day I might find a suitable donor case and a uh, and a sweep seconds uh, chronograph runner. So the spring clip that holds this in place simply drops in like so. And then using something soft, pegwood would do, but I tend to use a plastic piece for this. You just snap that in and that will stop that coming loose. And if I turn that there, you can see if, if, if you watch the spring there, you can see how it slips that way on that central cog, which is fixed to the rotor and then it drives it that way. So it will not allow it to turn one way, but it will the other. And that's how the winding, the automatic winding works. Sometimes the simpler methods are just better. They're, they're just sometimes a much more elegant method to solve a problem. And it just shows that similar to many 70s pin pallet, pin lever movements, that this kind of design really does have its merits and can perform surprisingly well 
to boot. You can see also that this particular one uses the much more modern Etacron regulating system, uh, which I'm a big fan of. Very, very nice, the Etacron regulating system. It allows adjustment for incredible accuracy, even on the cheaper movements. Uh, the other difference with the Omega or Lemania is that they will typically have a date and a day wheel and that is affected by a an indent specifically for the day wheel and a special clip that holds that in place whereas the CO1211 does not have that it's only ever designed to house a calendar ring uh, a date wheel so a little bit of interesting old and modern history for you there and if anyone happens to have a chronograph runner central chronograph runner for one of these please uh, give me a shout one more thing i would like to point out is uh, obviously this is a signed omega crown is that the stem you'll notice there is quite corroded so zoomed in you can see much more clearly the extent of the corrosion on this stem this will need replacement and it's feasible that with the amount of oil in this watch it has somewhat saved further encroachment of corrosion it's possible that it, it got no further than here but it's also very possible that the excess oil in here has helped this watch to some degree hopefully you've enjoyed that little look into um, quite an iconic movement that's sadly very rarely seen these days so thank you for indulging me and letting me waffle on about um, interesting, or certainly to me, interesting movements. I do like the Lumania 5100 and the uh, likewise the CO1211. And it was in fact an introduction to the CO1211 that piqued my interest and got me to uh, learn more, in fact, about the Lumania 5100. I only briefly read little bits and pieces about them. And for a movement that's used in many what would be considered luxury chronographs and high-end chronographs, it doesn't have the typical appearance you would associate with a movement of the relevant calibre. So it interests me in that respect. But when you dig a little bit deeper and look into it, you'll find that it's a fascinating and very, very well thought out movement. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching again and please join us in the next video.